One of the most beautiful, elegant, and young queens around the world sits on the throne of the most beautiful women of the royal family alive. She is a simple person. Once you look at her face, you feel a sense of innocence. Can you believe that Queen Rania refused King Abdullah's invitation to see her before marriage? Do you know a love story at first sight? Let us tell you the whole story. Watch with us until the end and share your opinion with us. In August 1992, Abdullah II bin al-Hussein al-Hashimi took command of the Second Royal Armoured Battalion. They were doing maneuvers and field exercises where he and his men lived in a desert camp and slept in tents for two consecutive months without interruption. In terms of accommodation, they were satisfied with the basics. For example, to take a shower, they extended what looks like a tube to a water tank that draws its heat from the sun's rays. They finished their training with success. The brigade commander informed him that they may have a one-night vacation along with the other officers. The king took off his military uniform, put on a simple shirt and light shoes, and drove to Amman. As soon as he got home, his sister Aisha called and said, I know you're in the city. Why didn't you come to dinner? He said to her, his only needs right now are a warm bath and a cozy bed. But because it had been a while since she had seen him, she assured him that the meeting would be brief and straightforward. Since Abdullah II had survived for two months on beans and tinned spaghetti, it was difficult for him to decline the offer of a delicious dinner. He arrived at Aisha's residence with the appearance of a toasted loaf. After spending two months in the desert sun, without noticing that she had dinner guests, he went wearing the same clothing that he had hurriedly put on when he left the camp. One of his sister's friends was working at Apple Computer in Amman, and he took one of his colleagues, Rania al Yasin, to dinner. As soon as his eyes fell on her, he said to himself, how beautiful she is. Rania, who was approaching the age of 22 at the time, was raised in Kuwait before moving to Jordan with her family, who were of Palestinian heritage during the Gulf War. Her father had already planned to retire in Jordan and had constructed a home there for that purpose, but the war accelerated the family's plan. Rania completed her business administration degree at the American University of Cairo, only fleeting conversations around the dinner table, but she elicited his great admiration for her, her confident sobriety, her remarkable elegance, and especially her intelligence. He had taken her charms from him, and he had just realized that he had to see her again. It took some time for him to figure out how to get in touch with her once more. Call her at her workplace. He introduced himself to her and told her that he wanted to meet her again, and she said, I heard things about you. She did not finish her sentence, but the sign was clear that what she heard was not all praise. He replied, I didn't introduce myself as an angel, but half of what you've heard, to say the least, is just empty rumors. His words didn't seem to convince her then, and she said she'd think about it. Abdullah does not consider himself one of those who retreat easily. He asked a mutual friend, Tawfiq Kawar, to pass her into her office, and he tried to convince her of his good intentions, but she was not convinced and considered him biased. Tawfiq returned from his mission, apologizing for not planning a meeting with her. But after discovering that Rania loves chocolate, Abdullah sent him back with a box of Belgian chocolate. In November, after he surprised her by cooking dinner for her, she finally accepted his request. In his book, Abdullah had previously said, at first, the motivation for me to learn to cook was the urgent need to get close to her, and in the past, it was claimed that necessity is the mother of invention. But later, I enjoyed it and found it a way to relax and unwind. I had made the tools to prepare some traditional Japanese food with chicken, prawns, and beef. Dinner went well, and we met once or twice before the end of that year and were on the phone many times. We had to keep our affairs confined to the two of us, as people loved to gossip, 
and we did not want to be the subject of such gossip. Because Abdullah was having trouble controlling his emotions, he informed his father that he had met a great girl in Ammon and had grown to believe that she was the one. On January 30th, Abdullah invited Rania to dinner to celebrate his birthday. His father al Hussein bin Talal sat next to her and they had a lengthy chat that ended with him being astounded by the intelligence, allure and beauty that she exuded. He revealed their secret immediately after knowing it. When Abdullah and Rania were still seated at home after his father and the visitors had left, his father was on the other end of the phone. He said, as long as we have now found out the secret, when do you want me to meet her parents? In the past, he participated in rally competitions, including sometimes professional competitions. He ranked third in the Jordan International Rally in 1986 and repeated this achievement in 1988. One of the most beloved places in the heart of Abdullah, a mountain on the outskirts of Oman, is Tal Pomegranate, from which his father and some of his friends launched 1962 a car race to climb the hill and it became one of the oldest sporting events in the Middle East. He asked Rania if she would like to accompany him for a ride in the car, and the two of them set out toward the top of the mountain. He would have liked to propose to her on a more romantic occasion, but as they stood outside the car chatting, he told her that he saw their relationship taking a serious turn, and it seemed to him that their marriage was a good idea. Rania smiled at him while she remained silent. He considered her silence about the response as evidence of approval and told his father about the conversation that took place between them. And since then, things started to accelerate. After about two weeks, they arranged a visit for his father at her parents' house. Abdullah was at that time returning from a business trip related to the army. And as soon as he stepped out of the plane at Queen Elia International Airport, he saw his father standing in front of the gate. The first time he came to the airport to meet him, he thought, wanted to make sure of the stability of his position and his determination to take action in marriage, as his father had been with him for a few years, urging him to marry and settle down. In Jordan's social traditions, when a man wants to ask for a girl's hand in marriage, he brings the most important members of his family or clan and their friends, and the most influential of them at the head of a prestige, assuring the parents of the aspiring bride that their daughter will be in the husband's home, welcome, and the care of her in-law's house. On their way to Rania's parents' house, Abdullah's father turned to his office, where he had to sign some papers. He left him waiting for less than three quarters of an hour before he started to get nervous that they would be late. When they got home, it was clear that Ronia's parents were expecting a simple and informal meeting, and they had no idea that Abdullah's father was intending to ask for their daughter's hand to marry his son officially on that day. They were kind and hospitable, and her mother had made tea, coffee and sweets, when she gave Abdullah's father the cup of Arabic coffee, he took it from her hand and set it down in front of him without taking a sip. In Jordan, it has been customary for the girl's family to give the chief of authority Arabic coffee on occasions when a marriage proposal is being made, and he takes the cup of coffee in his hand and places it in front of him, but he refrains from drinking it until he submits his request to the girl's family so that if they agree, he and the rest of the members of the precinct will drink coffee. If the parents refuse the request, abstaining from drinking coffee, according to the accepted customs and traditions, is tantamount to responding to this refusal. As much as refusing the request is an insult to the one who seeks proximity, the response to it comes by refusing to drink coffee. However, these customs are now practiced so that everyone involved is aware of their respective roles beforehand. It remains that the speed of events made him completely forget to tell Rania, and thus her parents, what they should expect from the details, even though he had spoken with Rania about marriage, since he asked for her hand in marriage. Before, when his father stopped drinking coffee, Rania began to understand the way things were going. But her good mother had no idea what was going on and begged Abdullah's father to have a coffee. 
Finally, Abdullah's father turned to Rania's father and spoke according to tradition about the reasons why their marriage is a successful family project. He was in a state of so much tension that he no longer remembered much of what his father had said. Then Rania's father announced his approval and he was overjoyed. Thanks for watching. Please share your opinion with us. See you next time.